Hello. Today I'm going to give you a quick overview of the features of Flight Map. Flight Map is available for Android 10 inch tablets and uh, you can get it on the Android store now. Um, so this is the main launching interface for Flight Map. Um, you have uh, server information. Now this server is the Flight Connect server that is available for free from my website. Um, it must be running on the same machine as Flight Simulator 10. Um, and all you need to do in order to get up and running is uh, pretty much click the discover button once it's ready and flight map will automatically find flight connect if for some reason that you can't find it it, it, it can't find the server uh, you can type it in manually um, general options you have the ability to switch between a general aircraft airspeed indicator which is a 200 knot indicator uh, and uh, a non GA which uh, goes to about 500 knots and then you can choose the aircraft that you want to use as your follow me airplane I'm currently flying in a Mooney so I'll go ahead and choose the Mooney so you can either click the launch button now which will launch into flight map or there's also the big red button at the top I call it my quick button um, it tries to do an automatic discovery of the flight connect server and it also will launch at the same time once it's found it so you can just click that button and here I am flying over in Washington State uh, I've got my GA airspeed indicator right here uh, shows me the maximum speed of my plane which is in about 195 knots uh, shows me my current direction and it shows me my current altitude I'm currently climbing at about 3500 feet and I've got my fuel indicators. Uh, general features of the map you can zoom in and out, zoom in, zoom out. You can also switch to an auto mode. Auto the uh, flight map will attempt to set the the zoom level of the map to an ideal zoom level for the airspeed that you're currently going. And you can also toggle the map types so you have the satellite view you have the satellite with uh, the locations displayed you have the terrain view which is really helpful when you're flying and you have the standard Google Maps view um, you also have the ability to turn the compass rows on and off and you can also switch between tracking modes so right now this is tracking airplane always up but you can also switch to a north up track in this case I'm going almost uh, east, almost dead east um, so that's uh, you can switch between those two modes as you wish and then there's also the ability to turn on large airports. I have a database of about 600 airports uh, throughout the entire world uh, all the major airports are in this list and uh, they show on the screen like so and you can toggle those on and off um, I'll go back into track mode because I like track mode and that's your kind of normal tracking application mode now there's also the ability to go into plan mode now in plan mode you can create ad hoc uh, flight plans so these are not flight plans that are tied to flight simulator in any way they're just you know flight plans that you, know, you just wanted to jump in and fly real quick you didn't really know where you wanted to go but you know, saw something interesting on the map and you want to go see what that is so you have normal navigation you can go around you can zoom in zoom out you can also change orientation and by clicking the icon at the top there the direction indicator you can go back to north so let's say I want to create an ad hoc waypoint how would I do that well you just kind of press and hold. Now I have get a, a distance to that location so I'm about 38 nautical miles away and if I wanted to add another one I can just add it like so and if you have the airports available visible you can also add them to the waypoints just by clicking on them and if you toggle them back off then everything becomes a waypoint and you can toggle between each waypoint as the active one so if you wanted to go to a different location you can and you go previous next 
and it will tell you the distance at your current speed to each waypoint as it toggles between them. Now as you get within one mile, one nautical mile of each waypoint, it will automatically advance to the next waypoint that uh, is, is in the list. To remove a waypoint, you just click it and boom, waypoint gone. Now this has been made the active one and, uh, and now I can navigate towards it. Now if I switch back into nav mode, I can use the compass rows to get a bearing to that location. So I get a bearing of about 95 or so, so I'll just go ahead and toss, move my autopilot to 95 and you'll see the airplane start to turn. Now if I toggle back into track mode the airplane is now turning to follow that as well. Now those are the main features of flight map. Now there is also a GPS integration with uh, with flight map and that is the GPS, the built-in uh, flight plan system and GPS system within Flight uh, Simulator 10. Now I'm going to zoom out here a little bit and, and switch over to my Flight Simulator. Now I don't have a flight plan loaded currently but if I wanted to I can come up to flights and go to the flight planner and I'll just go ahead and load a flight plan real quick. Let's see I'll go to Fairchild Air Force Base and then I'll click OK and I will just continue flying where I am now and now I've got my flight plan loaded into Flight Simulator and if I look on the uh, GPS display I can see that oh, I'm actually very close to the center line of the of the flight plan but I'm not going the proper direction so let's switch back over to flight map and you can see that now there's a new GPS mode that is showing right here and if I click it all of a sudden I switch to GPS mode now this is the the next waypoint on the current GPS flight plan and it also will give you a bunch of information about that waypoint it'll tell you what the altitude that is currently set for the flight plan is it'll give you the uh, desired track which if I was on the center line there of the, of the flight plan, that desired track would be 73. Uh, it gives you the ID of the next waypoint, which in this case is OLM. The estimated time of arrival at that waypoint, which is about five minutes at the current speed, and a distance of 17 nautical miles. So I can see here that I'm not currently on track, but by zooming in, I can see that if I turn to about 65 or so, I should be right on track. So the aircraft will now turn. And now that makes sense. If 73 was the desired track and I'm uh, outside the track, over towards the right a little bit, I should have to go uh, should have to go a little bit farther to the right now. Uh, or left, sorry. And go about 60. So that's the GPS feature. As you come, as uh, you come to each waypoint within the GPS, it will automatically switch waypoints as well, just like the ad hoc mode does, and uh, you will get the next waypoint. Those are all the features of Flight Map. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to post them on my uh, on my blog. Thanks a lot for watching.